Alright everyone, welcome back to Brick System Brothers. My name is Nathan Masters. You know the drill, it's the end of the month, it's time for our footnotes. Just going to recap what's been going on on the channel. Now I'm doing it a little bit different this time. Um, we did get our channel past a thousand subscribers. We had our watch time requirement met actually quite a while ago. So we went ahead with the process to monetize everything. And I do want to talk about that uh, in greater detail, but instead of cramming that in with our other updates, um, for now I'm deci I've decided to do kind of two separate footnotes videos. So this one down in the title says part A, just in parentheses. Uh, later today I'm publishing part B with kind of all about what it has been like to get monetized, what kind of ads we are running, and all of the details going on there. So yeah, I'm going to share all about that, but it's going to be in a separate footnotes video. Um, this one going to be very similar to what we've done in the past with just regular updates. So, uh, first thing to talk about is milestones on the channel. Of course, on February 1st, we did reach our 1,000 subscriber milestone, uh, which was right on the end of that challenge period. So, uh, it was a little bit convoluted because <laughs> we hit the milestone. Um, I think early in the challenge, we were just talking about like maybe by the end of January, so like midnight January 31st, was going to be the original cutoff date. Um, but then as we got closer and closer, and momentum was kind of building and dipping each time we did an update it was like all right i think we could if we extend this to say to the end of february 1st we could hit the goal we were that close to the numbers and so we just went ahead and decided um to kind of clear that ambiguity out with one of our recent uh updates earlier in january and said yeah we're going all the way through the first of february to reach this milestone we hit it in the evening and then as soon as I kind of posted that confirmation, a lot of people jumped off again. So, you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. We're back up now. Uh, as of recording, we have 1,090 subscribers, so almost 100 gained this month. Um, but it, I kind of expected it to, because that's what happened when we did our 500. Um, we, we just kind of said something along the lines of, when we reach 500 subscribers, we'll do the giveaway um, for the A-Wing. We did a little A-Wing Star Wars set. Um, and then when we had reached that milestone, we went ahead with all the giveaway stuff and then the people who didn't win kind of jumped off that were just on board for the giveaway. So yeah, I was kind of expecting that to happen. Um, you know, it's whatever. You, you can't do a giveaway without that happening on YouTube. So it's just part of the deal. Um, I kind of factored all of that into the expectations for reaching that milestone. Uh, we reached it February 1st, dropped a little bit below that week and then you know, as February went on, we actually gained a, several more subscribers a day. Um, one of our best days was when I, it was actually after I posted the shorts for the video launch. Uh, I think it was a day or two after that. That went way up in views and subs as well. So that was one of our top videos. Um, again, being that hashtag shorts video format uh, gets recommended in a different area of YouTube. Those specific types of videos, I'm not putting out a lot of them, but I'm still kind of doing those here and there just to see how they perform. And probably about 50% of the time, those are getting over a thousand views within the week of being posted. So some of them not right away. There seems to be like a couple days delay sometimes. And some of them don't get any traction at all. So it's kind of a touch and go thing, but I did want to mention shorts are still doing pretty well. So um, what other milestone did we reach? We passed 200,000 views on the channel, so that's pretty cool to kind of pass that milestone as well. And um, that's kind of been building up pretty consistently ever since the start of 2020 when we really started putting out um, more content on a regular basis. We actually are in the middle of a bunch of different series uh, right now. Of, like The shortest one is just going to be three videos, I think, and that's the... That's the 1978 tractor series. So let me recap um, kind of what's going on. Right at the first of the month of February, we started our Q&A series. So our, um, our kickoff was just kind of a call for questions. Um, I'm pretty sure all I did was scroll through our, our past couple videos. Um, I wasn't even me talking. It was just kind of a voiceover thing. So I was just putting it out there to see what kind of response there would be if we had enough questions to make an ongoing series. We got quite a few and we also published our first answer video for Q&A. Um, that one involved Josh and I both. We each answered five questions. Um, 
I think the next one in that series is going to address some of the questions that were coming in about starting our YouTube channel, kind of in more detail, like when we first started, what did we want it to be, um, and now that we have a thousand subscribers and we're monetized, what do we want it to be? Kind of going into detail about that just from uh, our perspective of the owners of the channel and the ones putting this content out there. Uh, shortly after that, I finished my ideas review. So that was five, I think four or five videos talking about the ideas projects. There were 25 that reached 10,000 supporters that were going into review stage. Um, so those are kind of on the timeline now. Ideas ideas gets a little bit um, hard to follow because there's a lot of overlap with the projects that are moving through the platform. And so the ones that I actually talked about right now uh, have passed the supported milestone but are in the review stage. And I think it, uh, depending on how long review takes for certain projects, you can actually have multiple waves of projects in the review stage. So I don't remember if it's four or three stages per year that they do. Um, but uh, by the time you get multiple stages going through a year and you have um, project stages that take more than a year to complete, you end up with a huge amount of overlap in where different projects are at. So we're actually still waiting on the, some of the stuff that was way back in 2020, even back in 2019, where we actually knew that these are going to be idea sets, but we don't really have any idea on what those look like yet. Uh, in their final released form as an official Lego set. The Ideas Blacksmith is kind of the most recent one to get all the way through and be released. And that's seen a pretty good launch. I know um, they're having issues keeping that in stock. So, and that's something I'll be keeping an eye on to pick up eventually. But um, it was never, from my perspective, it was never like a priority to go out and get the sets the day of release. I, I don't really understand why people rush to do that other than just having, you know, the fresh the newest Lego set on the shelf. So that was never a priority for me. Um, if there's a set that Lego puts out that I know I want to get eventually, I usually try to wait until there's a nice gift with purchase promotion going on. Um, and in this case, our Amelia Earhart uh, plane that I talked about is coming up on March 6th. So I will be keeping an eye out for that to see if I can place an order to get that. But uh, again, I'm not in a big hurry to go pick that up. It is something I want to get though. So yeah, we finished my kind of just discussion about the ideas projects, um, and I don't anticipate making a lot more of those. I, I don't mind discussing it, but just putting it in a video format took a little, a little more work than what I'd rather put in. I would rather put that work towards making other kind of content. I also started the 1978 tractor, so I've done one video about that so far. The second one should be coming out pretty early here in March, coming up. Um, and then the third one is going to probably be the review kind of bundled in together with the wrap up of that mini series talking about building uh, a 1978 Technic set from pieces I already have on hand and just kind of looking at what goes on behind the scenes there. Uh, we have continued three series um, that have kind of been ongoing. So the, the most recent one that was started kind of in October last year is the job lot. So in October 2020, I bought two big tubs of Lego, just loose bulk Lego. I had to go through and sort out all the kind of non-Lego items and the trash. So that was kind of phase one. And then I put that on hold while I wrapped up uh, school in Ames, college in Ames. And when I graduated, that was all at home waiting for me to do the cleaning phase. So that was phase two, when I just talked about how to clean up all of that Lego. And now we're in the middle of phase three where I'm actually working my way through the sorting process and getting things into categories. I'm still on the fence if I'm actually going to go all the way down um, and you know put things in like my rubricable inventory style uh, where I actually have the count of each single piece type in every color. Um, at the least I'll be getting a comprehensive count of all the parts. That's something I really like to do just to have data and numbers. Uh, about what's coming in and um, my value of the collection that's going in um, and then how much I'm spending as well and how that kind of averages out to the different parts. So at the very least I will be counting all of those pieces in the job lot. Um, at the most I'll be building a comprehensive inventory either with Rubricable or Excel to actually kind of track which pieces are coming in. It's going to be a huge project if I do that um, but that is something that I enjoy you know that aspect of the hobby 
I think is something I enjoy not a lot of other people do so I'm not sure how many people actually do that um, but it is something I do uh, for pretty much everything that comes in that's less than a thousand pieces I build up these digital inventories to have uh, a really clear picture of what's going into the collection and kind of track the collection as it's built up um, so more to say about that later the job lot is a series that is ongoing and there's still plenty to cover there. Most recently looked at the minifigures um, and the other video that I have ready to go coming up next month is some mechanical pieces. So definitely more coming out for the job lot but we are in phase three which is kind of the end of the project. Um, once I cover the main categories of the job lot that will be sorted out into the collection um, and I might reference it again if I use specific pieces there to build a project but otherwise um, that will kind of be the end of that. Now, there are other lots coming in. Um, I have been buying more Lego on eBay, so I might be doing similar style videos, um, but this job lot series is kind of moving along with the specific pieces I bought in October in those two large bins. We also continued our Hold Up What's That Awesome Piece series with number 17, the engine part. Uh, again, within the last week here, published that video. Um, I think the timeline for those has been kind of stretched out to one or two a month now. Um, for a while, pretty early in the channel, QTAP was actually something I started to be sure that we had content coming out on a regular basis um, in case I ran out of ideas to do other kinds of videos. So I wanted to have something that we could kind of come back to if we were running low on other um, topics and other subjects to make videos on. And QTAP has kind of been, you know, the friendly series that's been going on. Um, mostly because, you know, we're not going to run out of Lego pieces anytime soon, so I can pretty much just pick a hundred Lego pieces to cover, and it's just a matter of making a video about those. Um, what does change over time is the data for the pieces in terms of how many sets those have been in and how rare they are. Um, but in a lot of cases, we cover pieces on QTAP that are retired, and so um, it's kind of locked in time in, as to which sets those have been in and um, which colors are out there. Um, but a lot of the pieces are current production pieces and that will change over time. So QTAP, uh, of course, still going. Um, number 18 is recorded and edited, so that could come out here in March. Um, up to that point, I've selected maybe five additional pieces to cover, but I haven't done any recording for those. Um, but that will continue. You know, QTAP is going to be kind of our signature series on the channel here. And we are also continuing our What's at Walmart series. So What's at Walmart for fans of Lego spells out waffle as I have indicated in previous uh, footnotes. I talked about changing the name there. Um, one of the main things I did to change, you know, just changing up the name there was put Lego in the title. Um, a lot of our What's at Walmart videos may be not coming to Lego fans searching for, you know, what could be found in the store because Lego not in the title there. So it's people searching for Lego at Walmart, maybe not finding those Walmart videos. So I did want to make a title for the series that was a little more descriptive and could get people to those videos if they wanted to see them. Um, and it just so happened that it makes a wacky acronym as well. So I like acronyms. I like acronyms that you can uh, pronounce so that have a good balance of vowels and consonants in there. Of course, HUTAP is um, the, the original acronym. And now we have our WAFFLE acronym as well. So those are kind of the series that are going on. I think at some point I'll build a little timeline to show uh, everything that we've done. Of course, QTAP kind of being the constant there in the background. Um, the second most ongoing series probably are What's at Walmart. And then after that, the Job Lot series that's been going on half a year now. So uh, other than that, you know, we have things that come and go. Our Q&A will be going as well. So I think where we are right now with um, people that are responding to that, we have enough material for another three or four videos. And as we get those published, people will be asking more questions in the comments of those answer videos. So I think that's something that will be able to be self-sustained going forward, but um, maybe not doing that as often as some of our other things once a month, twice a month, um, just in terms of making those answer videos and getting that series moving forward. All right, what else did I want to talk about uh, for part A here? I went to the Detroit Lego store, but I haven't made any content for that. So the last 
content I made looking at a Lego store haul was from Chicago and um, that was just looking through the pick a brick and the minifigs that I bought there um, in the middle of this month of February I also went to Detroit because it's it's somewhat close by um, it might be one of the only opportunities while I'm here in the area to get up there um, the selection on the wall I feel like wasn't as good I also forgot to get a picture of the board of pieces so really I couldn't do the same kind of video that I did for Chicago because I don't have the picture of the board but I could make a little haul video about what I actually bought I did get a little thing of minifigs and one large cup of pieces so there's there's more content there to be made if that sounds interesting I think if we're running low on other topics I will probably make a video about Detroit um, but that was actually that actually occurred during this month of February um, and at this point it won't be coming out until the end of March or even later uh, so just you know a little side note and we also published I think 31 videos counting these two footnotes this month so pretty close to the upper end of how many videos we put out a month but I think last month in January is still our record of 35 um, so you know past 30 um, for February of course 28 days that's more than one a day um, and actually a lot of those if you've been paying attention are videos that I have recorded back in December and January just to have content on hand I knew I'd be up here in the Great Lakes area on this work trip so I wanted to have enough content to put out in case things were moving slow up here um, but it turns out um, by the time we had our thousand subscriber giveaway videos um, my trips to a couple Lego stores and making two videos just about the Chicago store um, and also having my um, bricks and minifigs haul to make a video about um, and all the stuff from January and December um, we're still putting out quite a bit of content in fact this last week here uh, I just wanted to burn through some of those and so I put out one every day um, that will probably be slowing down a little bit of course our posting schedule that is kind of rigid that we do want to follow for sure is Tuesday Thursday Saturday so I think for the past three months I've been trying to for sure put out videos uh, those three days of the week so that we at least have three out a week and I think going forward we'll still be able to meet that um, but of course we also like to look at when sets are announced and um, this past month specifically we did our uh, giveaway videos where we're spinning that wheel to um, to pick winners for first second and third place we have one more of those coming up tomorrow on March 1st because we didn't hear back from the third place winner um, and I have a poll going on right now in our community tab um, just to kind of get some feedback on how we should move forward with that drawing this will also apply to future giveaways which will probably occur at 5,000 subscribers um, just in terms of for this time it was a comment based entry so I went through the videos that were eligible to be entered on there were nine I gathered up all the comments and then um, I just made a list of names so whether or not the comment was actually talking about the giveaway they made it onto the list and now looking back you know we've drawn two people that um, as far as I can tell they were just commenting on the video to either you know they thought it was cool so they wanted to leave a comment that happened on our first place drawing um, it was actually a comment on uh, the collaboration we did with clone plays so in that case you know that might be a comment from someone not even familiar with our channel they saw the stop motion that clone plays did not necessarily interested in the announcement about our challenge going on but still thought it was cool that clone plays did stop motion so um, by the the structure that I laid out for how to enter the contest I wanted to be fair and include everyone that commented and use those comments to generate the giveaway pool um, but now at the end of that contest kind of where we've done our drawings now to kind of see what that response was it's kind of obvious that we didn't need to include the comments that were obviously not interested or familiar with the giveaway we should have just stuck to the people that were there um, to be in the running for the prizes so moving forward I think that's what we'll do and on the first when we do our selection tomorrow it will be out of people that just you know specifically wanted to enter the contest and mention that in the comment 
or made a reference to the contest or something like that. Um, I'm actually not sure how many people that's going to take out. I haven't done that yet. Um, it might actually not be that many because a majority of the comments were for the contest. So what are the chances that two of the drawings were people yeah, in the minority? I don't know. It was, it was one of those things is like, all right, you do it and you learn. And the next time that it happens, um, in our case, probably for our 5,000 subscriber, whatever that ends up being, giveaway. Um, if we do the comment-based entry, we'll have to keep that in mind. Um, so that's where we're at at the end of February. Like I said, all the stuff related to monetization and ads will be in the B footnotes video coming out later today. Stay tuned for that. I know a lot of people uh, have definitely expressed interest in that side of the channel and uh, from my perspective is like running everything and getting all that lined up and published and like, actually moving now on the channel has been really interesting, a lot of fun and you know it's, it is more work so it, it all balances out like at least <laughs> at least we're getting some money now. So yeah I want to talk about that but I didn't want to put it in with everything else that we were talking about on the channel. So yeah, that's about all I wanted to mention for our footnotes this month, and uh, we'll be doing probably the A and B style of footnotes um, for a couple of months unless something changes, and I want to combine those for some reason, but um, channel updates and milestones here in part A, monetization, ads, and that kind of thing in part B. We'll see you there.